What's going on everybody? Gus Costa here and once again a video on the Canon XA11. Today I'm going to show you how I have my Canon XA11 set up for video for different situations and some of like the buttons I'm going to get more in depth on how I use this camera and how I have mine set up. Uh, let's get right into this video and talk about uh, the features and how I have mine set up and how you can set yours up too. Okay, so when you turn your Canon XA11 on, uh, the first thing you're gonna see here is um, that I would do is hit a function and if you hit menu, it gets into the menu setup of the camera. Uh, for example, here you have digital zoom and what the digital zoom is, it allows you to go up to 400 times uh, zooming in. Uh, this would be very tough to, I mean, this is nice if you're like um, trying to record something very far away. Uh, let's say for example, you're doing plane spotting or something like that. If you have a tripod, you would want to turn on the 400 times. If you do not have a tripod, I advise not to use the 400 times because it's very hard to keep it stable. Even with the image stabilization on, when it's 400 times zoom. So I advise to keep that off unless you have a tripod. Uh, the second option is soft zoom control. And what this does, it allows you to control the zoom as far as uh, when you want it to start or stop. So it's kind of like smooth. The third item on this list is zoom speed level. Uh, this is just how fast you want the zoom to be, uh, fast, slow, or normal. I usually leave it on normal. The third one here is the zoom. Uh, so this one is the zoom rocker speed, the one on the camera itself on the body. And then this one is to control the uh, zoom rocker speed on the handle. The handle also has a zoom button. Uh, the next menu here, this is your autofocus mode. And the way I leave mine on is instant autofocus because these cameras do not have dual pixel autofocus like some of the nicer cameras that Canon makes has. I decide to just get the most out of the camera that I can. Uh, the zoom is not terrible in this camera, but it's not as good as having dual pixel autofocus. So focus assistance, I do not use. I usually use autofocus or I will manually focus on something by using the ring on the lens. So the next on the list is face tracking and I always have face tracking turned on. You can choose to turn it off if you are just a person behind the camera but if you're shooting yourself I advise to keep the face detection on and certain modes of the camera the face detection will not work like if you're shooting low light mode the face detection does not work. Uh, down here uh, some of the menus are not available on this camera. Uh, ND filter I usually turn Turn the ND filter pretty much during the day. ND filter is turned on at night or indoors. I shut it off if I have uh, some good lighting, but if I'm outside and it's a sunny day, I will definitely turn the ND uh, filter to automatic. And what that does, the ND filter pretty much is built in on this camera and it's a, essentially sunglasses for your camera. And it will, if you are shooting outside and it's your picture is too blown out and you've maxed out the settings on your camera, putting an ND filter will help that. And you can actually get a shallow depth of field Flicker reduction, I leave it to off. I really don't worry too much about that. Conversion lens, Canon has the wide uh, lens and actually even tells you on the menu here that one's a telephoto, TLH58, and the other one that they make is a wide WAH58. I have not tried either one of those yet, but I hear great things about it. Uh, they are supposedly really good and they work natively with this camera. And as you can see, it even tells you what uh, the names of the cam the lenses that you can get with this uh, camera. It's pretty cool. And if you're shooting with the telephoto, obviously you would select that uh, telephoto. If you're shooting with the wide, you would select the wide. Under on-screen markers, you can either choose to have level or grids. I have mine set to grid gray, so it's not too distracting. And that's exactly what it looks like right now. The lens is covered up. That's why my screen's black is because I actually don't want the picture to be all messed up so you guys can see better the menus so i have it uh closed up ir so infrared light i leave it to on when the handle is on the camera so you have an option with this camera to shoot in infrared and if you have not seen the video i have made a video on how to shoot with infrared on this camera so if you have uh, the only time it works is when the handle is on and that's as far as i'm gonna go into this
this because if you would like to see, I already have a video, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail here, but you can leave the infrared light on at all times if you would like, and you can choose uh, between green or white. And I have it set to green. Down here is just uh, some microphone menus. So when you plug in a, an external microphone, a lot of these displays will come up. And then down here, it tells you other uh, features that you have with this. You have attenuator, trimming, you have limiter. And as you can see, every single thing for this is turned off. And the reason I leave it turned off is that I have a really nice microphone, the Rode NTG3, and I already get a, a nice sound out of it. And the only thing I do in post really is maybe just boosting it up a little bit. I already like the sound of that microphone, so I don't do anything in, on camera. Everything I do with audio is in post. Going on to the second menu over here, uh, this is where you would set up your camera how you want to shoot. The very first line item here, as you see, is movie format. And as you can see, I have a set to AVC HD, which is a little, it's not much, but it's a little bit better quality than shooting in an MP4. So I have set mine to AVC HD. And as you can see there, uh, you can change it to MP4 if you would like, but I do like AVC HD. MP4 is a little easier because you literally, if you're shooting for somebody, you can just uh, grab that file and send it. And that file will be pretty good to go and it'll be watchable right away where AVC HD, you would have to um, edit and post and be able to send it in a different format. Next, we have recording mode. And obviously this is the quality you want to shoot at or uh, frames that you wanna shoot. So if you wanna do 28 megabits, 59 frames per second, where you want to slow down your footage and post, if you're filming a bunch of skateboarders or something like that, or uh, action sports like surfing, it, and you wanna slow down the footage, I would do M P. I mean, I would do 59 frames per second. I'm not sure what the difference is between LPCM and the regular 28 megabits per second, but you do have those options and you can do 24 and it goes down all the way to five. And the lower the quality record in, the more that you're going to be able to record. So if um, storage is a problem with you. If you have so much footage to shoot, you can shoot at a lower quality up to like five megabits per second and be able to record for a very long time. Some of these settings you can actually record for probably more than 24 hours straight, depending what card you have. So right now I have it set to 59 frames per second, but depends on what I'm shooting, I will change it to 24 frames per second as well. On this menu now, it just gives you how you want to set up your media media cards so your SD cards so as you can see here I only I believe I took one of the cards out so I usually have one on each side but right now I think I only have on slot a you can select to record on on the B slot or on the a since I only have a card on the a slot I'm gonna leave that selected and you can also this camera believe it or not you can take photos with it and you can I don't recommend using it for photos I don't use it for photos because it's strictly a camcorder to me if that's something you want to do go for it it, uh, and you can choose to um, record your pictures on card A or card B as well. And then this menu here, dual relay recording, I leave it on standard recording. And the reason being is when I you lose some of the features, if you do dual recording or relay recording, as you can see, it's dual recording is grayed out because I do not have a card on slot B, so that's grayed out. If I inserted a SD card on slot B, that selection on the menu will be available. Uh, relay recording pretty much does if you have another card in there and you fill card A, then if your camera is set to relay recording, it's gonna record to, uh, once one card is filled up, it'll record to another one. The dual recording pretty much is, you're gonna record the same footage to different cards uh, just as a backup. And you can actually record in different formats, which is the one reason I do love camcorders and I say it's so underrated because you can record it to multiple cards and you can record in different formats. It's pretty amazing. You can record in 30 frames per second in one and 50 uh, frames, 60 frames on another card. So it's very versatile and very, there's so much you can do with these cameras. So, and then here, because I have to, because I have set to AVC HD, it's not gonna let me choose my frame rate. But if you look up here, when I change to MP4, now you're gonna see that there will be more options down here. Now I can choose to record in 
29 frames per second or 23 frames per second or I can do I can also do if I go back up here again and I go up to 59 frames per second and which is a high quality mp4 now you can see here that I can record a slow or fast motion as well I do get that option and if I go in here and I change to, uh, I believe 24 megabits per second. And you go back here, now I have a, I can turn this on and I can actually record slow motion as well. And it's pretty nice. It, and the fast motion and slow motion here pretty much, it looks like you're, if you're doing fast motion, it looks like a time lapse taken with a DSLR. Not the same, not the highest, not the same quality, but it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, and if you slow down the footage, it slows, just a warning, it slows in camera if you choose this option it's gonna slow down camera so when, while you're recording it's gonna look like normal footage but then when you play back it's already gonna be in slow motion and there's no way uh, to change that on the camera but you could change it in post if you choose to record in 60 frames per second then you can just slow it down 40 percent and you also get that slow motion effect it's up to you sometimes I use this uh, slow motion done in camera because actually sometimes I feel like it looks a little bit better than slowing it down in post video snapshot is if you wanna, I really don't use this, but I have a setup for eight seconds, is if you wanna see a snapshot of your video, you can see eight seconds only. I don't really use that. Time code, I gotta be honest here, I really don't use time code as well. I'm not very familiar with time code as far as the settings for this camera, so I don't use it. But if you are somebody who uses it, that feature is available. And also here, you have more, more features here on color bars you have file numbering and things like that and this is where uh, you actually format your card this camera doesn't say format as a thing about the thing with uh, camcorders is some things are a little different worded than uh, DSLR so for example here initialize means format and you have the option to do if you select the card you can do initialize and then it asks you if you want to do a complete which I usually recommend to do a complete I'm not gonna do here because I'm not sure what I have from footage in there that's where that is on the third one here on the menu is just language, your actual uh, time zone. Uh, if you wanna pick a different time zone, you would go in there and choose. I have a set in New York because I am on the East Coast. You can choose whatever you want. You can have the um, date and time view assistance on LCD brightness. And this is more, this menu is more for uh, the camera itself as far as um you know things that you prefer this is all preference so i'm not gonna get much into this uh, it also has the viewfinder backlight headphone volume it has notification sounds which i turn off audio output monitor delay custom dial buttons uh, and then here is where you would also assign your buttons. I have changed some of them, like custom button. Actually, custom button one I left as is, as you can see here, is autofocus, manual focus, which that one's important to me. Uh, two is pre-recording, I don't use it, so I just left as default. Assignment for three, I left on the third one, I have it set to uh, power image stabilization. And then on fourth, I just have it for functions. To get into my functions, a uh, quick shortcut. And here you can set your white balance, Priority, I leave it to auto white balance. Depending on what I'm doing, I will set the, the white balance myself. For the most part, I just leave it on auto white balance. And here's where you can change the direction of the focus ring and the response how fast you want how slow you want and then here you have your preset speed for focus battery information uh, record command i just leave that on off hdmi if you want to record um, uh, to an hdmi output you can do those settings are available in this camera right here and then distance you can set to feet or uh, meters. I do leave to feet because I'm in the US and we still use, we still on this uh, system. I don't know if we'll ever change, but so I, let, I leave it to feet because I can identify better. Then backup menu settings you have here, certification, and you can reset your settings if you would like. So that's it for the menu button, which would be these three options. I just went over every single item on the menu. And if you have more questions about it, uh, certain things 
please let me know down in the comments. I cannot go over every single one of them. One, because I don't really use some of these. And two, I it would be a, probably a 10 hour long video if I go into every single one of them. <laughs> so uh, let's get into the functions of this camera now. So right here on the functions, if you only press the function button once and not the menu, just go in the first one here, you can set your recording screen programs. I usually record in uh, manual so you can do program TV which is shutter priority and then AV is aperture priority like I said I only use manual so I leave that on manual and then here you can get into the low light you have so many different settings that you can choose which is pretty much built into the camera so this one is a portrait mode you can do sports mode you can do a night scene you can do snow which will probably it's pretty much like a highlight priority uh, beach which pretty much be the same highlight priority so you don't blow out your picture sunset and then you have your low light which pretty much is just gonna drive up the ISO in the camera or the gain as we should say in camcorders and then here you have fireworks I will make a video one day and just show examples of each one of these uh, menus and recording for now I'll just um, show you that so like I said it's always on manual for me and one thing you need to know with um, camcorders that's different from from the DSLR is some of the words so for example I uh, for ISO on a DSLR the equivalent on a camcorder is called gain and it's it goes by DBs so depending on what recording you have on your camera so if you see here it's set to this gets an aperture as low as f 1.8 you I have a setup to f 1.8 my shutter is at 100th because I was filming previously at 60 frames per second but right now I have it to 23 so you could actually turn that to um, 1 48th or 1 50th of a second and then here as you can see is your gain and it's set to 6 dB right now and then you have other information on the screen as as far as um, your image stabilization your battery how much you have uh, how much left you can you have to record on the camera which right now I can record up to 11 hours if I do in these settings 23 uh, 24 frames per second 24 megabits mp4 I can record it for a long time this is the settings right here for zebra lines uh, I have mine set to 100% and I'll get into that in a little bit so the recording programs I went over that a little bit so right now white balance if you want to set your balance right here like I said I usually leave it on automatic and you can set it to daylight shade cloudy fluorescent tungsten and then here you can change your Kelvin to whatever your uh, situation is wherever you are if you're if you want to do if you know your white balance if you've measured it and you know exactly what it is and you want to set it you can do that here and then second the other one here is your focus and you can set to you can set your focus to manual and then you Use the ring or you can leave an auto focus if you uncheck it and then here is focus peaking so if you're doing manual focus and you want to um, know if you're in focus and if you hit peaking it's going to give you uh, these red lines around it and going down in the menu here you have your zoom settings uh, if you want to go through here and set your zoom over here you have your image stabilizer so here you have dynamic the one thing is with um, some of the settings with the image stabilization as you can see right now so if i shut it to off uh, see how i have it it's a little bit you get more of the picture if i do go into dynamic it crops in a little bit not much but you get a way better image stabilization with this camera if you have a set to dynamic you can also do standard if you'd like but if you're doing handheld i would say set it to dynamic but if your camera's on a tripod definitely shut it off so you get more uh, of a wide angle and you don't lose any of the picture and then here you also have image effects and you can pick looks so ydr it's wide dynamic range to so get more uh, a better dynamic range in that setting but it does have a minimum of 6 db, db of gain so keep that in mind it will automatically set your camera to 6 db higher than whatever it is that you're recording you can also do highlight priority which will pretty much focus more on the highlights and get a better um, a, a better picture on the highlights and not burn them out and uh, also you can do standard which is which 
what I do tend to do the most. And you can also change the settings here on uh, color. I usually have mine set to plus one. The sharpness, I usually have to plus one as well because this camera tends to be a little bit softer than a DSLR. So I do like to sharpen a little bit on camera and in contrast, I have it to zero. I want to show you a little bit doing a walkthrough on this camera. Uh, right here you have, so when I have my microphone plugged in, which is on this side, and this is the quick release buttons on the bottom of the camera here. This is the quick release buttons on the bottom of the camera here. You don't wanna pull your XLR microphone cable without pressing those buttons because you would tear your camera up. Uh, right here is your settings, and I know it can look a little bit intimidating, but don't you worry, it's not that bad. So pretty much just look this as split. The top is every all the controls for one. So because I record with the Rode NTG3 and it does need 48 volts of phantom power, I have mine set to plus 48. Right now it's turned on on, but I don't have any microphone on so let's just shut that off so the handle right now is off if I plug a microphone in then I would turn this on and you can set the settings here to manual or auto I suggest you do set it to manual and set your your levels uh, just keep you you know your levels usually I don't like to go over 12 DB for audio so just look on the screen when you're setting it up and then here you can change by this wheel you can change it up or down usually with the Rode NTG3 I have on the first or the second mark between the first and the second is plenty and then on the bottom here is the same settings but if you were to use a second microphone the settings are the same so like I said I just advise to keep it in manual you can do auto gain if you want to but if you have a nice microphone and everything and you want to have more control over your audio definitely go with manual what you see here is the speaker for the camera if you really want to see the quality sound if you're recording and you want to know I don't advise using the speaker here definitely plug in a microphone which the port is available on the other side I'll get there in a minute down here is what you control your aperture ISO and your uh, shutter your aperture and your ISO or your gain right here you use it by pressing this button here as you see here right now keep an eye on on the left side of the screen here and you're gonna see. So right now I have a set, I press the button and I have a set to change the aperture. So now I can change the aperture by moving that little knob right here. If I wanna do the shutter, I can do that right over here. And if I want to do the gain, I can also press this one more time and then change the gain on the camera. That's what these two buttons down here is for. So this one is to select and this is to change it right here. Right here is where you would turn your camera on. So the very first thing you probably wanna do is get a battery on your camera, right? So let's start from the beginning. So this is where you would insert your battery. And I'll tell you these batteries last for a couple hours. There are some other batteries that will last longer. The way you do it is pretty much just insert your battery like so turn them and insert them here and then there is a release button right over here to get the battery out once your battery is plugged in you want to go ahead and insert your memory card your sd card right here and as you can see i only have one in slot a but you can also have two usually i have two but i took one out to use in a different camera so right now i only have one and you want to make sure this little door is closed because the camera will not turn on and work if you have that off and also you don't want to get dust in there as well if you want to record in infrared that's where the switch is right here and you can like i said you got to have this top handle on to use infrared and then you would just hit this switch to on if you move it down over here then your infrared will be activated and you'll be able to choose to shoot in infrared i don't use very often i don't have much of a need for infrared shooting so i leave that off right over here is your custom buttons like I said, you can set to whatever it is that you want. There are options there. You can go through the options. As you get familiar with the camera, you're gonna wanna change these to make your life easier when you're shooting. On the top of the handle here, you have a start and stop button and you have a little zoom rocker as well. And usually I have this one set to slow and then the regular zoom rocker, I have it a little bit faster. And then right here on the top, you can set your camera to fully auto 
manual or a cinema. Cinema is just like different looks. So I have a set to manual, as you can see. Right over here, you have your microphone holder as well. I have made a video about this little guy over here and how you can, what you can do to grab, to have a, cause this hole is huge. So you need a little rubber grommet to actually get a microphone to sit there snugly. And uh, I haven't made a video about that. I'll link that below as well. On this side we have, we can change the, 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 the ring control to either focus or zoom. And you would go up or down to set that if you would like. And then here we have two more custom buttons. And right over here we have our viewfinder, which is if you're in a really bright area, like outside, um, the LCD screen can be a little bit hard to see. So you have the viewfinder here and it telescopes up and down to accommodate the way you wanna shoot. Over here you can also get to the function menu by pressing that function here and using this joystick. I never use this. I just like to do the touch screen. It's a lot quicker for me, so I don't use this very much. And then you have another start stop right over here. On this side, like I said, you have the zoom rocker and I have this one set to a little bit quicker than the other side than the one on the handle. And right here you have ports for DC in and then AV out. And the way you do it is just pop this little door up and then you can plug it in right over here. Power supply comes with this camera which is amazing as well. They give you all that so you can just plug it into an outlet if you're gonna be shooting. Let's say you shoot for a church or something like that. You can just um, plug it into the wall and let this thing run. As long as you have a, a couple SD cards in there, you're gonna be very, uh, very good. And then if you wanna play back, if you wanna play back in your TV, you can use the AV out to do that. So some people think that this camera is a little bulky with the handle and they don't wanna use the XLR microphone sometimes. If you take the top handle, you can actually plug in like a Rode Video Mic Pro or something like that. Over here, which there is a port, the red port is for an external microphone and you can do that if you would like and the camera is a lot smaller with that and lighter. Right here on the left, you have your headphone jack. Down under here, here you have a mini USB port and then you have your HDMI out. Down here you can also purchase a aftermarket or a Canon made remote to play back, start, stop the camera like we kind of used to do back in the day when you plugged it into your TV. To take this hood off, very simple, just twist it to the right and then you can do that. And this is where, if you would like an external ND filter, even though this camera has a built-in ND filter, you can attach that here. This is where your converter, your telephoto converter and your wide converter lens would go. It would be right over here as well. And the way to put your lens hood on is by inserting it a little bit sideways like this, twisting. And I usually leave it on at all times. There's a button on the side here that you can open and close your lens hood. I will be making more videos on this camera. Please let me know what you would like to see more in detail. I quickly went over the menu just to kind of get you to set up your camera and be able to shoot, kind of get you to know what the settings do in the camera and how to kind of take it out of the box and just get going right away. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I love camcorders and especially this Canon XA11, this new one that came out. I will be making more videos. I continue shooting with this camera. So don't worry, it's not gonna go away. And I wish more people would um, actually get into this. You can even vlog with this camera. I am gonna make a video. I'm gonna attempt to vlog an entire day and I'm gonna post that and show you that you can do that. Because this camera, you can just remove the top handle here and you can turn this right around like so and get really nice image with it. And it's so, you can get time lapses with this you can get slow motion. There's so much that you can do with this camera that people don't think you can. It's all my opinion. If you agree, that's great. If you don't, that's great too. We're not all the same. This world is pretty, would be pretty boring if we all liked the same things. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. I love you guys. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video.